Devin, what you used to call me when we played? Brown dog. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, guys, this is going to be uh, – I'm going to just shut up, smoke my hookah, and enjoy my Saturday and let this man – he told me that uh, he didn't have a big platform, but this is what I've been saying that we need to do around the world. And then I talked to my guy from L.A., and he said, man, Devin George is doing exactly what you're talking about doing now. So I'm like, shoot, there's no need to invent the wheel. Let's give this brother a chance at the steering wheel and let's highlight somebody that the media and nobody is talking about, which is uh, to me, what he's doing is uh, is the stuff we all should do and learn from. This is a true hero. So I'm going to play a clip and then I'm going to let Devin uh, come in and talk about it. Uh, let me go to the stream. Hold on. I took advantage of free lunches. I was always in the financial aid. I was one that took from these opportunities. And so it's only right for me to feel like I need to refill these pots back up. So I started my nonprofit building blocks. I'm a retired NBA veteran. I now do community work and real estate development. Everyone has humble beginnings. We're going to North Minneapolis, you know, where I was born and raised. Yeah, just right on the corner. This is where uh, my dad still lives. This is the house I grew up in. The neighborhood had a lot of obstacles. There's crime, obviously drugs. The overall goal is to get the families out of survival mode. Housing is the foundation with everything. One thing isn't gonna just change it all, but as you start to see of three, four, five kids starting to change, get opportunities, three or four families starting to change, their income's changing, and now they're buying a house. That's the ripple effect that happens. And then they pass it on. People are more excited about this building I put up, you know, more so than, than anything I've done on the basketball court. I'm a single mom with four kids, two girls, two boys. You know, I have a resident, Maisha, that's in the building right now, went through a divorce, lost a job, had a real life situation stuff come up. For me, affordable housing means it's an opportunity to start over in life again. It doesn't mean that you're below anyone else. It just means that you're going through something or transition in life, and it gives you a stepping stone to be able to build over again. Take a deep breath, have a place where kids can go. It has a co-op. I can go right downstairs and get fresh fruit, fresh vegetables to juice up. It's a special project, the co-op grocery store that is up and running and going. When you have an underserved community, it's stressful. And so I started my grocery store in a food desert place where we can kind of at least get the ball rolling. And now coming up, she's moving out of the building and she's buying a house. I'm in the process of buying a house again and it feels so good. When I drive up and see the building, it gives me purpose. This is where it goes down at. And now after the programs, I know what this guy wants to do. I know what she wants to do. Are you on the right path of doing that? Ty, he reminds me of myself, of just kind of how focused I was, driven, good attitude. Honor roll Emmett, that's, a, that's his new nickname, you know, because he getting good grades. I feel like this building will help me. It'll help me to see my dreams. Well, he's in a tough situation, but he's excelling. I feel like good going in there. Like, I don't have no worries. Ty's getting recognized for being an outstanding student. I want you to have this Building Blocks character ward with your name on it. If I'm having a hard day, like it cheers me up. The members cheer me up a lot and stuff. So that's why I like it because it's supportive. I wanted to make sure you knew that I see what you're doing and I know what you're doing. So I want you to keep doing it. That's what Building Blocks is about is dreaming about doing whatever it is you want to do and staying on path. Dreaming of being in my own home. Dreaming of having a good, stable job. Dreaming of making sure that I'm able to provide for them. Like, it's helping me a lot now to learn, because I'm learning new things every day from it. You can actually spread your wings and fly. It warms my heart because I know when I, this building is, is a sign of hope and help. <laughs> Man, I'm talking about, you've been doing that since 2018. <laughs> And not one news station, not one syndicated radio station, not one Stephen A. Smith put you on there. And see, this is the reason why I don't like uh, the, the terminology and the names that they call people just for playing basketball. Because your impact, you know, me and you were role players. 
But the impact that you're doing right now, this is all-star caliber. So you got the floor. Well, I will say this, that people recognize, like, everywhere I go, this is all that they're talking about when I'm in Atlanta. It doesn't matter where I'm at. In airports, people are shouting out, want to dap me up because of this. And they don't even live in North Minneapolis, even though this is going in other states, other areas. There, uh, people are excited about what's going on and what I'm doing in these communities. And so, but it's not told on the larger scale. I never really had social media. I never really document what I'm doing when I'm in the midst of it. I'm never thinking like, okay, I'm about to go help the kids. I'm about to do this. Let me document it. Let me take a picture. I just, my mind has not really been there. So that's part of the reason. But at the same time, I appreciate you shouting me out. And I appreciate you giving me, you know, throwing that on your platform. Man, just I want you to tell them some of the things that you were telling me, because if they don't start following you, then you can come up here once a week or whatever you want to do and start uh, telling people and start sharing and getting videos of the things that you're doing, because what you're doing is the blueprint and the things that I was talking about. Um, I'm trying to coordinate um, like a national shoe day or shoe drive where we give these kids some shoes, because you know how it is when you, you, you grow to 14, 15. You can't just go in the store and buy these shoes. And a lot of these kids now, I don't know what they're eating, you know, but <laughs> big yeah, feet. I'm telling you, it started really, you know, I wear 15s, but it really started with Chuck and in the barbershop back in L.A. Of yeah. being, hey, man, bring some shoes. And I'm like, who are you giving these shoes to? A 14 year old, 14 year old wearing my size. And so these kids are getting big now. So, yes, every little thing helps. And everybody. And one thing that you said is you said, man, I want to do exactly what you're doing, but I'm not doing it on a larger scale. It doesn't matter. Most people think you have to do something large or something big to make an mm -hmm. effect. It'll yeah. happen, especially whenever you're doing what I'm doing, whatever he's doing, and we collaborate, we work off each other, we build off each other. That's what's going to make a difference. So don't, people shouldn't really say, I'm not going to put an 88 unit building up there with commercial space. I'm not going to do it. My impact isn't going to help. If you put in one unit up, one center up, it's helping. So yeah. don't be discouraged by the level in size of what you're trying to comp contribute to our community doing. And man, listen, um, I have these talks. I know people say, oh, he just got to social media. He's doing this for the drama. No, I use the drama to segue into this. See, I know I mean, mama cooking told me. <laughs> like I always knew that like, I had a bigger purpose. And it's like, every time I wanted to go, you know, lose it on the court for how they was talking, my mom be like, oh boy. <laughs> this ain't what this is about. <laughs> like, no, you you be quiet. Yeah. And so now I think, you know, I'm here to connect people together like yourself. And we got, we in a beautiful space right now. Ain't nobody talking about us, but us. Ain't nobody fighting with us, but us. So if we can stop all this fighting and do what you're doing, and we got football players all across the country yeah. that we can stop putting money up to our ear and go put it to the city council and go down there and come up with a business plan, then now we can duplicate what you're doing in all these opportunity zones. And the government has the money there for that. So I don't understand why we're shouting and running in the street. We need to be doing what you're doing. So I salute you. And anytime you need to come on this platform and tell them how many cities that you're planning on doing this in. Well, right now I got projects going up in New Orleans, um, Augusta, Georgia, um, more projects in Minneapolis. That's where my, my hometown is from. That's where I'm from. That's where my biggest brand really is, is in Minneapolis. Most people think, you know, we're a bust or we're this or we're that or whatever, but where we're from, we have a bigger brand, not a national brand, but we have a national, we have a brand where we're from. And so, um, mm -hmm. those are the cities that I'm in right now, but more coming, um, because this is the word is starting to get out. And a lot of players are calling me saying, Hey man, I want to do this. Can you pick up your building and bring it to my neighborhood? Because we right. need it's right. not the North Minneapolis thing where I'm from in my neighborhood. This, those buildings and those developments and the philosophy can go in any underserved community. And that's pretty much what I've been doing is duplicating it, just picking the building up and found that same blueprint in all the states. So are you saying you're willing to share this blueprint that you have with yeah. other athletes and other players so they can stop hollering and yeah. use that income and use their foundations to do this in every city? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. I really let them know there's a few things. It's an investment. We're investing back in our community. But at the same time, the ownership goes a long way and it helps solve the problem. So me having ownership in all these buildings is I make the decisions on who can be in or not. I can look over people that have fell in bad record, you know, that were that happened back in the day. And what people that's what people don't see is they don't yeah. see those boxes being checked. They don't see the communication with people saying, hey, man, um, 
if I don't get this apartment, I can't see my kids. And I say, oh, OK, well, you look like, you know, look like my cousin. You look like my uncle, whatever the case may be. Or they, they people don't see those situations, understand the ownership of that. And then right. really the hiring with these developments, I got to hire. I got to right. hire people. There's job creation. And then with the commercial space. So it kind of goes all in. I'll give you an example. I got a young brother, um, Sammy, in Minneapolis. He's going to have one of his restaurants on the first floor of the building. So I'm oh, showing man. the community the velocity of money, how that works. So the young man that you see on the video just right now, mm -hmm. I'm having Sammy hire him. So when mm -hmm. Sammy hires him to work at his restaurant, that money goes into his pocket. If that money goes into his pocket, then his mom or him come back to Sammy's and buy a sandwich. So the money's going back to Sammy. The money Sammy's paying me for rent, it goes into my uh, um, employment, which people look like him. Okay, when they get their paychecks, they go back to Sammy and give him the money he just gave me for rent. So just the velocity of money, we're understanding that and why it's important for us to support all of our businesses and how when one of us raises up to another status, that, that builds everybody up. And so those are things I'm working on right now. It sounds like you're redoing Black Wall Street. That's what it sounds like. You're, you're putting what we need in the community and you're not hollering and shouting. You've been quiet. I haven't heard from you since we played together. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. haven't heard from me either. Yeah. But I've been, you know, slowly behind the scenes. But now I understand, like, it's time to network. It's time to build. That's our purpose. Yeah. And I think we getting distracted with following all these groups when the group is us. It's we the people. If you can yeah. take care of your neighborhood and then spread that love all across and give that blueprint, because a lot of these guys, they didn't know this. Yeah. And instead of buying these pretty cars and going to the club every other night, you could be investing in your own neighborhoods, your own future, and then you could still get those pr uh, pretty cars because, you know, you're investing back in your future. So I'm sure it's, it's lucrative to do it, but you got to do it in a way where, like you said, you can make an impact on a man being able to see his own child. Yeah. And that's exactly. amazing. Exactly. And, that, and that, that's the part that I look over and that's the part where well, we, I have a heart to heart, a real good conversation with them. Once it kind of gets past to a certain point where they're denied getting in the building, you know, the ladies that work for me on my staff, you know, they're in tears, you know, with with hearing the stuff when they have to deny people or whatnot. But there's some that just come across and I have to sit down with them. and say, look, you have many other opportunities and chances. I'm going to give you one chance here. Right. You, have you mess up. You got to be away from the people you were yeah. I kids in the building and stuff like anything disruptive. Like I'm, I'm getting you out. So but it's worked out. Those yeah. people have turned into my biggest allies of like helping me out and yep. the building and. When all the stuff was going on, they were the ones looking after me, having my back because I gave them a chance, another chance, you know, that they needed. And mm -hmm. with us owning this stuff, we can do that because it is a problem that when they get out of jail or if they have a situation, if you check that box when you're going to rent an apartment or get a job or whatever, it's just an automatic no. Unless the people that are in power look like you, mm -hmm. or their uncle look like you. Some of these people look like my family members. So it's only right <laughs> for me to reach out and say, you know what, I got to I got to bend on this one. So. So how did you get like this? How did you stay connected to this passion of being able to give back? Because you it seemed like it's never the guy that they prop up in, in position that, um, like you said, you don't have a big social media following. But this what you're doing seems like it's way more effective than what we've been doing. So how did you get like that and what centered you to get like this? Well, really, it was just combining with everything that we went through and everyone knows, you know, us playing in the NBA, people see commercials on there, the redo achieves and we're handing out turkeys. People understand those are mandatory events that we have to do. We Come on. Have to do. Mandatory mm -hmm. events is get into these communities because the NBA recognizes that these communities or underserved communities support our league and support us so much. It's only right for us to make us get back out in these communities. So seeing that, what it did to a child for me, a Laker, to come in and read a 30 minute book to a kid of hearing what that did to him all year long. A Laker came and read a book to me and it was really 30 minutes of my time reading a book and we leave. But what that did to kids. So all those things. Then every summer I come home, I saw my neighborhood just going down and getting worse. Yeah. More boarded up buildings, more people put in the corners, more crime. And then my dad, he always had the same attitude. My dad's from Mississippi. So he had this old this attitude. It don't matter what the media is saying. So it's the, that's the downside. It don't matter what the media is saying. It don't matter what the people are saying. It don't okay. matter what your coach is saying, what the owner is saying. He used to ask me, 
are they late? And I'm like, Dad, what do you mean are they late? Because he saw they my they that check for my check. I said, yeah, they me the check. And he was like, you, you know, you sit your ass on that bench and you shut your mouth. You know what I mean? You ain't got no problem. You just sit there, you know, so th that's yeah. why I kind of stayed in. That's probably what people say. Well, why this man stays so quiet for 20 years, man? No, you know, this this is our job. We got a job to do. And then one more to your point, I'm jumping around. But to your point, the disappointment when there's not enough Jalen Rose in the world that understands how hard it is being a role player, mm -hmm. how hard it is being in that fraternity how hard it is to last 11 and 12 years. They don't understand. There's a draft of 60 people per year to get a chance to get a new job. Only half of them even make it for so about 30, 40 jobs. And there's only 400 people in, you know, 450 players. So people don't understand how hard of a job it is and how many people. So the disappointment doesn't necessarily come from the people that didn't play, but the people that did play, you understand how hard it is to have a productive stat line when you get thrown in the game for two minutes, taken out, thrown in here for this, taken out. You only get one shot in the first quarter and then you get another one in the fourth quarter, but you missed it. You weren't in the rhythm. So everything. So but people that play understand how hard it is to jump in the game. I always tell people the game is like a treadmill. It's on 15 at an yeah. end. Time. When you get in the game, you, you better got be ready. To get going. You ain't know I'm going to just go up and raise it up. It's already gone. So you better get your heat patch ready. You know everything. Yeah, you used to have them things wrapped around your whole leg. You the one. Hey, you know, hold on. <laughs> As you get old, be like Carlos, heat <laughs> pack. Somebody pick up two files quick. Man, I'm about to get this game a little bit early tonight. So I want you to tell them about this. Tell them about battling through injuries because I don't want to talk for you, but I think you had a foot injury or toe yeah. injury or something. Dang. But it was a contract year. You still had to play. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, stay out there. But the fans don't know about that. Tell them about the injuries and playing through injury. People don't understand how much wear and tear playing in the NBA takes on your body. From a game, you have to jump. If someone says something, it's like climbing up a ladder, jumping off a ladder of a two-story building 65 times, how you would feel the next day. Yeah. Like this, you got to get up. You don't got to go 65. You got to go up. You got to climb up 20 times and jump off. But the wear and tear, and I always Unless tell you- Unless you call me if you was young. <laughs> <laughs> so when I retired, man, I had parts of my body that were a 60, as a, the age of a 65 year old person. Here me I am too. 33, mm -hmm. you know? So people need to understand the wear and tear on your body and plan through injuries. This is our job, we have to perform. And if you're out there, no one cares if your ankle, if your shoulder, if this is hurting, if your fingers, if this, whatever it is, if your back, because you make matter. money. Remember, Stephen A made it all about money. He nah, humanized this and made it like they make money. You can't just do this. It's like, dude, this man's foot is like swollen. He yeah. just had a cortisone shot. Yeah. He's fighting for a job. Yeah. He, you know, he tried to feed his family. He just had a kid. Like, Look, are you crazy? No one, but see, they don't, no one understands it's just the outside. But people that are in the locker room know my foot looks like my, you know, my ankle is the side of a grapefruit. I'm right. out there playing. But you gotta you gotta get through it, you know. But the money doesn't make that go away, right? You, know, you, you just gotta take the heat that comes with it. So, um, you know, so that's it. But going back to the blueprint and why I started, going back home, seeing and when we where we're from in our cities, everyone that's doing social work, principals, teachers, whatever it is, they're always saying, "Hey, man, can you come talk to my kids? Come talk to my kids. Come say hi to my kids. Just come and pop in. Just come." Yeah. So as I'm doing that. I'm going to visit after school programs and noticing there's kids missing at a time. And at these after school programs, the after school program was at the school in a lo another location. So I'm like, where are these? Why are they missing? Well, I come to find out, you know, the kids are not. There's no stable housing. They're staying at auntie's house tonight. Mom's boyfriend next week. Grandma's yeah. house. Next week. There's no stable and they don't get them to school. And then when you have young kids, that's on the parents. You know, as you get older and kids can walk and drive and skip school or whatever, that's kind of it's a different story. But when you have young kids from kindergarten, sixth grade, and then they missing weeks of time at school, that's the household. Yes. So I said, well, why don't we talk about the household more? I've talked about that for a year on on Facebook and everywhere else. And at that time, I didn't have a big following. But I've been speaking about this for a while. I was a child in that situation. So I know it's about foundation. And you message as professional athletes, eat vegetables. You see, I'm big, strong, and tall. I went to school. I got education. And, and, and you're talking to somebody that 
one, don't know where their next meal is coming from, or two, right. don't know where they're living. So right. I'm really listening to what I have to say. So that's why I said, let me get my own housing where I can start housing people and families. And then the message that they get, they can start hearing what I'm saying. The people I bring in to speak or talk or give them yes. exactly, they can hear it because they're out of their survival mode of like, where's my next meal coming from? So when the kids come in, the video you saw, when the kids come in at three o'clock, I feed them snack. Yes, that's hungry. important. They yeah. hungry. They're hungry. Yes. I feed them snack. And then I had such a small space, I had to split the younger kids and the older kids up. But at five o'clock, I fed them all. And then mm -hmm. they go upstairs and go home. So I give mm -hmm. them snack. And then at five o'clock, I feed them dinner every day. Mm -hmm. we go mm -hmm. home. Yeah. So those type of things is what, you know, what goes on. But, but that's really why I started. And that's the blueprint of really why I started because the, the, the housing situation needs to be addressed first because you mm -hmm. can't concentrate on anything else other if you don't know where you're living or your next meal is coming from. Mm -hmm. Education and eating green beans and veggies, ain't nobody really trying to hear what you're saying on that. So mm -hmm. that's why I started focusing more in on the affordable housing with the services in the commercial space. And man, that's so beautiful because that's my thing. It's like, we, we're watching America do this all the time. They're taking neighborhoods, they're regentrifying them in neighborhoods that you can't walk a dog or uh, not get hit with a stray bullet at certain points. And I'm not going to even say what color is in the neighborhood, but when they regentrify, all of a sudden they bring in businesses, they bring in things that the community needs. And next thing you know, we have a police presence and everything is safe again. Mm -hmm. I think with, with what you're doing and what I'm trying to do, we can control our own neighborhoods. We can we can feed our own community. We can house our own community. And um, a lot of the a lot of the women that I have staying in my apartments, they already have stipends um, in Section Eight that the government pay. So mm -hmm. let's let let's like you're doing. Let us build the communities, make it safe for these women and these children, and and let's allow a, a boyfriend or a husband or whatever else because they need that family structure. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. It, it, the, the development and the activity of us getting involved in our communities does help with the crime. It gives people other options. It gives yeah. kids other options that don't that, that take up their time. And then it also brings in people that have something nice that start policing this ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, for example, the, the, the corner that I took, I tackled, you know, it's two blocks from where I grew up at, but I tackled one of the hardest you know, crime areas in North Minneapolis. And I say, you know, if I'm gonna make an impact, I'm gonna just go right to the heart of the problem. So both of my developments are right there on the heart of it. But as I started, it was, you know, I got alerts for my phone because I'm in California a lot. So I get alerts if there's a police call, if there's something there, I get alert to my phone, what's going on. And at, after a while, once the developments got up, I had to check with my directors, like, am I still on the alerts? Because I haven't got any alerts with crime of people, you know, the police showing up and whatnot. And they said, no, it's just really, you're still on, but it's just kind of, it's kind of went away because why? Because there's activity going on. It's not vacant mm -hmm. corners. There's kids coming in and out of the building. So there's people and the elders are saying, hey, hey, this is right, this, right. going on over here. That's what's important. Program yep. coming over here. Moms are trying to watch the, you know, catch the yep. bus right here. Not here. Y'all gonna have to move around or move. And so it's kind of one of those the, things. The, the men of about. the neighborhood, once you build something like that, they will help and assist you to protect what you built. And they have, and they have, and I have to hone it in a little bit, like, hey, you know, just yeah, don't, don't hurt them too bad. <laughs> I got some, I got some young guys in the to deputize some of these boys. You know, yeah, dragging people out and you know doing too much police. So I'm like, man, just you know, I understand. But for the but kids, for the kids, we need that type of response because there's been kids getting shot through the windows of houses yeah, and yeah. all that, and yeah. so the areas and the things that I'm trying to build that that should not be tolerated. And it ain't no such thing as snitching and all that when when you're not a gangbanger and when you're not a street dude, it's a community. And if you want to do all that, you need to take that somewhere else. It's kids here. It's mothers here. And we got to stand on that as men and women should support that as well, because what you're doing. I mean, I want you to right now, you need to shout out your foundation to you at this point. <laughs> Man, go to <laughs> buildingblocksmn.org, buildingblocksmn.org. And all my information is on there. And it just shows, you know, you can get in contact with me, get you an email. Um, it kind of shows our programs, our philosophy, what we're trying to do. Um, and so it, it's, uh, I appreciate, man, you bringing me on and, and we'll be in contact. But because I'm, I'm supporting guys too, 
Um, I look over other stuff. Guys send me things, information. How'd you do this? What route? What route did you take? Does this look like a good deal? Yada yada. So I, I do all of that for guys as well. Um, you know, professional athletes that want to do this thing. So anytime, send me your stuff. What mm-hmm. you think you're planning, and then I'll uh, shoot it. And I'm, I mean, again, I got a project going in Augusta right up the street. So yeah. Oh no, we coming to see you. Okay. <laughs> so that's the part two that, that really get people is once I got the model up. When I brought people in to see the program, see who's helping, mm-hmm. see who I have to hire, see what the people look like that's benefiting it, mm-hmm. they, they leave. They're like, no, nah, no, nah, I need this building. Yeah. Pick it up and bring it back to Georgia. Pick it up and bring it to New Orleans. I, I want this this whole thing. And so that's yeah. basically what I've been trying to build. Because I'm right now with, with my team. They're doing a the, uh, design for the building. You know, they're getting everything, uh, the program and stuff set up. Some of the mm-hmm. stuff is separate, but I would love to compare notes and I would love to look at what you got going on. Because like yeah. I said, I have, I have 21.9 acres in Brunswick that I'm trying to dedicate to these kids and maybe building a warehouse, some football fields and mm-hmm. Uh, something that we can get some residual income for these kids to feed mm-hmm. in maybe a trade school, school or something, some coding, something yep. for these kids. Because the things that are positive and the things that you can look at in real time for as coding, I don't understand why we don't have that in every school. It's just we don't have access to those resources and those things and that information. And that's a language that we at least need to introduce to our community because that right. language is going to be spoken going forward. And they we have enough money to put. A, we we have enough money circulating out of our community to put some great coding schools and and have teachers there and have a warehouse where we're teaching kids trades. Yeah, because that's my thing. If you if you're a man or a woman and you have three trades, can't nobody silence you. Nope. You nope. can do whatever you want to do. You are the job. And what's yep. going on now is everything is going to a place to where we have to work for someone else. Yeah. I don't want to work for somebody else. I'm retired. You know, a lot of these guys going to get jobs for somebody else. It's like, that doesn't make sense to me. Can't do it. I, expect, we, I mean, we were employees. For yeah. the you need to be here uh, at time, get here at 10, get on the plane, get here. Yeah, 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 that's over with. Like, I'll be there when I get there. <laughs> well, how Kanye said, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I wake up, I wake up, I get on my tractor, I do whatever it is I feel like doing. Uh, but you know, I just want everybody to feel what that's like. And yeah. that comes through hard work. I've been working since I was 14 years old. And it seems like you was raised by an old school man yeah. like that. Because yeah. I was raised like that as well. That blue collar yeah. man that, you know, no matter the circumstance, no matter what you're faced with, that's why I can stay quiet for so long. Yeah. I give praise to my mama's cooking because <laughs> she gave me discernment. Yeah. She did, but, uh, but a man gave me that strength and that manhood that you don't have to overreact. And a lot of men, uh, a lot of young men now, they're overreacting to things. Yeah, and that, that's the problem I see. They don't know how to have a healthy dialogue without coming into the conversation with microaggressions. Yeah, and it, and again, it's it's like again, my father. I talked to him after every game, and he would critique if I whether I got in the game or not. If I didn't play, you didn't. He's he's like, you didn't cheer loud enough. He's like, you didn't cheer loud. I'm like, man, I want to get traded. I want to do this and that. He told me, he said, baby, you sit your ass. He told you, shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> and he hung up on me. He said, we ain't got no problems. He said, call me when we got a problem. So he used to be on me every game. And, you know, he used to be, you know, in Minnesota, they two hours. So the game ain't really starting until 9, 9.30 anyway. So, yeah. Up, but, yeah, so. But that's what we need to collaborate, bro. Collaborate. Man, we're going we gonna to blow you up so big. Uh, <laughs> man, I, I want to have you on here every day because I know your personality. You was always funny as hell. And when the time <laughs> when shit was getting rough and people weren't talking to us, we would lose a game. You always had that smile. You always had, oh, no. I'm like, this motherfucker here crazy. <laughs> but look, I'm going to leave you with one last story. People ask me the same thing. They said, man, what's up with Kwame? Man, I didn't know he was that funny. I didn't know he was this. I said, man, that dude is hilarious. If it was quiet, I would be the one to mention no names, but your next door neighbors. I said, Kwame, man, I'm coming over tonight. You're like, nah, I ain't going to be no parking, man. This is a party going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> then LeBron getting on me because, hey, hey, you starting stuff. Quit instigating. Quit getting Kwame going. I'm like, nah, I just want to know. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, <laughs> low, so people finally get a, a, a taste of, like, our personalities and what yeah. we do in the locker room and because they don't want to talk to us after a game. 
you know, they want to talk to the other guys. The, the cameras are all over the other, the, you know, two other guys in the locker room. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got jokes and we got stuff that we do yeah. in the locker room. We know how to speak and talk. But, um, but yeah, so collaboration, man. Let's collaborate. Collaborate. Man. Collaborate. Everybody. Anybody's doing stuff, call me. Let me know. Email me. I'm there. My team is helping out. Whatever it is. If it's, you know, so anytime. Man, that, hey, listen, I don't think you understand um, how powerful this is coming out of a pandemic and just highlighting what you're doing um, in a time in America where we have these opportunity zones and the information is there, but our community seem to uh, not pay attention. So maybe uh, they need a little kick in the ass and hopefully uh, yeah. me and you can do it by just showing them the motto of, hey, hey this is how you do it. And uh I always, like I said, man, everybody tried to make this thing about basketball. You know me. Uh, did I walk around like I was just a sad puppy and I was just mad about being a bus? Or man, how was it? You had us in the locker room rolling. So, so <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, it, but people don't understand the outside world that that's not, they don't understand. We with each other every day, morning, noon, night, on the plane, in the yeah. city, that city. Yeah. So we with each other more than our families. And sometimes we can't stand it, goddamn children. Yeah, for real. I mean, just like brothers, you know, brothers fight, people fight, whatever it yeah. is. Yes, but, but, but I think what you're doing is giving a light or a glimpse into like kind of the stuff that happened in the locker room, how we talk in the locker room, how we mm -hmm. cap each other in the locker room, how we be joking with each other. We, it's a long, you know, we got a, yeah. it's a long season. So, so shout out to you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Yes, sir. You're taking the bullets for everybody else. You, you, you're standing up saying what other people want to say about whatever mainstream media, but whatever's going on. Yeah. Just like the other brother that works in the manosphere, the Kevin Samuel, man, he getting support like crazy. Why? Yeah. Because he's saying stuff, people that can't say stuff. Yeah. So they just going to keep no, going. No, wait, when you say can't, what's stopping them from saying it? Get the cancel culture. If oh. somebody else that has a job or don't have their own ownership or, you know, whatever the case may be, that get on social media, that work for somebody, they'll get canceled. So what they do, they got they got somebody that said, I'll take the bullets for y'all. I'll stand up and say what you can't say. So when he does that, they just go ahead, and keep pushing them, donate, super chat, do what they need to do, because he's speaking for people. So how is, how is this a free America if you're saying that we can say whatever, but <laughs> that's, that's kind of like those fake practices that's not mandatory, but bring your ass home. <laughs> y'all yeah. have a lift session if you want to, Chip Schaefer. <laughs> bring your ass to the lift station. <laughs> oh, you shout out Chip. Yeah. Shout, shout out Chip Schaefer. Yeah. Uh, we don't have no practice, but some of these guys that ain't been playing uh, like 30 minutes or more, <laughs> like uh, they almost point at you, like y'all better have y'all ass here on the day off. Um, you don't have to be like, here, but it's, but, it's uh, a volunteer. It's yeah. about, you don't have to be here, but, but look at you like. Yeah. You did, you, you, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so man, that is. I think it's it's the time is now to to seize the moment, bring us together. But but we have to. Men got to stand up. We got to go back. We build the infrastructure in America. What Kevin Samuels keeps saying is something that is so true. We got to understand that as men, you can't be no little fucking. Oh well, I don't want to. But fuck it, you can't be no little fucking uh, little puppy. You got to be that grizzly bear, that lion that you are. And if it's being independent, if it's learning a trade, if it's might not go to college because this job can get me fired. The main thing that I love about being retired is that I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. I don't represent anybody but myself mm -hmm. and my family and my name. So mm -hmm. that's why I didn't let them play with my name. Now that I don't uh, have a company that owns my likeness, mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. keep running ads, destroying my likeness. But what I will say, I'll give I'll give most men middle class men of past that don't want to get canceled because in some form Kwame we did it ourselves we shut our mouth we let everybody Absolutely. talk about it. you know yep. what I mean say what you want to say print what you want to print call me a bus call me a dog or whatever I'm gonna shut my mouth I'm not gonna mess my check up yeah we're doing the same thing because some of these guys if they say something the stuff that Kevin Samuels say and go yeah. back to work they might not have a job so then how, how how do we combat that? Do we as men stop supporting companies that support cancel culture? Because we have to stop this at some point. We cannot allow companies to cancel people for saying things in America. We can't yeah. do it. Yeah. So we got to come together and find a way to create a network of jobs to where if you're going to cancel this person, 
we're going to give them a job that they're going to make some steal some good money where they can stand up like a man because we have to be able to have conversations. And what they're doing now is through jobs, they're controlling people through likes and shares on Facebook. We all deal with who we like. If a person has 20 million followers, regardless of if you challenge a person with 20 million followers and we're smaller than them because they like them and don't like you. Oh, it's on for you. They're going to find out everything about you. And regardless of what you're saying, you could be saying whatever you want to say, and it could be absolutely right, but yeah. they don't want to hear it because they don't like you. Yeah. And I think that's making people the most uneducated people in the world. You have to have conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But what I will say, the few people like you, like Kevin Samuels, jumping out in the support is speaking for itself. It, it, it is it's not necessarily i think a little bit of it is the drama people enjoy the drama people enjoy the yeah. joke and living, going back and forth but at the end of the day i think it's a lot of people supporting because they've been wanting to say this for so long yeah he, so i'm gonna pass on what i want to say through you kevin sam has right. been saying what a lot of men want to say for a long yeah. time so they're just gonna pass him on yeah he keeps keep saying it Keep saying it. I'm doing whatever I need to do. If you see in some of his chat line, protect this man at all costs. That's yeah. That's that what they said about me too. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Protect this man. Oh, that so means. you know what? I, I gotta I gotta protect my sponsors since they like the drama. I gotta mm -hmm. say this for my sponsors. Damn you, Becky, with the good hair, and I want to jump up and down on your ass like a trampoline, boy. Go ahead, say what you got. <laughs> <laughs> so they love the drama. I gotta give them the drama so they can listen. You can't keep talking all that smart shit, and I can't tell them. That I don't want to stump this nigga like that man. Go ahead. I'm, uh, I'm toxic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mix in a little bit of both. A little bit of the drama, give him a little bit of both, but at the same time, sneak in the message. Give him a little drama, sneak in the message. You know what I mean? Do a little bit, do a little bit of both. Don't just go yeah. all positive message. Don't go all this because that's not what's gonna get a lot of people's attention. So yep. when we in, feel like how do we grab them and then say it? Damn you, finger wave. Go ahead. What you gotta say? Now look, <laughs> look, you got me on here. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> hey, listen, uh, Devin has nothing to do with what I have to say. Uh, 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 he did something he shouldn't have did. So I'm going to use him as comic relief for the entire time that I do YouTube or a podcast. He invited me to his, you know what? And I think that's a little too far. You know me. I've never done that. No man should ever do that. So he should be the butt of all jokes. So, you know, I'm going to make him the butt of all jokes. So and CB4, I'm going to let him go because he's CB4. Yeah, but, but at one point, I think, as opposed to fighting, when is the collaboration going to happen? Well, uh, with Matt, as soon as he let me jump up and down on him like a trampoline for what he said, we can collabo. Uh, Jack, as soon as he stopped playing tough and uh, being gangster on the back end and then not uh, being a man, because I talk to them gentlemen like a man. If me and you were teammates just like me and him, so I would think that if I can hit you on the behind the scenes and say, yo, bro, that was a little too far. And as you know, you're doing business. Same thing that Stephen A. do. He docks people. Saying what he's saying about um, that young man, Andrew Wiggins, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, I wouldn't trade him for a box of cereal. Those things, will, the companies listen to him. That's 8 million people who heard that. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that's not personal. That's taking money out of people's mouth. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you gotta, you gotta make it, you gotta make sure we stop creating these uh, personalities and give them a stat sheet and let them learn the game of basketball from a perspective that we know it. That guy that comes in the game, that energy guy, that knocking everybody around, those Reggie Evans of the world, shout out to Reggie Evans. Sometimes what he does don't end up in a box score, but what he does is way more valuable than the person that you think is the best player on the team. You need a guy like that. And so it's brainwashing these young kids to disrespect. A lot of celebrities don't come back to the, the neighborhood because of how we treat them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's very there's there's several stories that you can you can point out that celebrities were in the neighborhood, and even me now. Now that I'm speaking out, people are starting to ask, "Well, he a celebrity? Here it is. Where's the celebrity air that you breathe and I breathe? How come everybody else get to breathe the air we breathe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where's the celebrity embalming fluid? Man, where's the celebrity gravesite? Where's the celebrity jails? They locked me up. I was in there with everybody. I was running the holding cell, though. I'm telling yeah. you, I only past the <laughs> nigga. It couldn't nobody get no water when I was in there. I was in that motherfucker for three hours. Ain't nobody drank nothing. <laughs> Look, to your point, man. I will say this: 
the, the one thing that I will say that we usually don't do is I've been supported by our community. Yeah. Big. You know what I mean? Usually sometimes, you know, celebrities or other people, they kind of, hey, what's your motive? What's this? They know I don't really have to be doing that. This is a passion. I'm really trying to help our community. I've been supported by our community like no other. And so what I've been trying to do is say, okay, the same support you give me when I put these smaller black owned businesses in these commercial space, give them the same love. Just yeah. go spend your money there. It'll come back yeah. to you. Just, just, just trust me. Go spend your money there. And yeah. so that's what I've been kind of pushing, you know, with my development as well. So how did you avoid, is it because, I don't know, because I get a lot of, I've opened up restaurants, I've opened up the different things. And um, a lot of times people say, or I hear the chatter in the neighborhood, I'm not going to help them get no more money. He already got money. But then they'll go spend their money with uh, Gucci, Prada, and all these different places that's owned by white folks. I don't get it. Why do we think like that about each other? You know what? I'll tell you a funny story. That's sad. So my dad is a community guy. He ran the neighborhood bar back when we, we were coming up. And so there was a it was a black liquor store and it was a white liquor store in our neighborhood. He bought all of his supplies and everything from the black liquor store. And at the same time, so there was a guy who said, hey, can you give me a ride to the uh, liquor store? So he's going the Staten Liquor, shout out Staten Liquor, you in business with me, but he gives a ride there. And he's like, oh, no, no, man, I don't go shop here. He said, what are you talking about? He said, his is cheaper and it's a black man. He said, oh, no, that nigga ain't getting no Cadillac off me. My dad said, here's the deal. You're going to go in there or you're going to walk. One of the two. And so, but that's just our mentality. And then uh, another example. So my dad had the bar, but there was a guy Leland on the, on the outskirts of North Minneapolis that had chicken wings that everyone loved. So my dad would go get Leland's chicken wings, let him bring it in there, collect all the money, give every dime back to Leland. And so I said, dad, you didn't charge him no fee. He was like, no. He's like, cause I got the chicken and the beer. He said, so when they come in, I ain't had nobody come in buy no chicken wings and not want nothing to drink. He said, but he, I'm collabing with him to make my product better and to help him. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that mentality anymore. We're so worried about, let me get my percentage and not yep. understanding that it will come back me helping you get your development going, it will come back from some form of way to me. But we want a direct correlation of like, I'm gonna help Kwame, you, I, well, what am I gonna get back? What do you do? Don't worry about that. It'll come yeah. back some form or fashion in another way. And so that's what we need to do is collaboration, 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 build each other up. And before I got on with you, you know, uh, shout out to Star. Star is an elder and that's what I said. We need to connect these young people back to elders. He understood that I only been on YouTube for what a week and a half, you know, maybe two weeks at most. Mm -hmm. So when he got on the phone with me, he just chopping it up. What can I help you with? Da, 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 da. Literally just giving me a breakdown of what I need to do. And if it wasn't done, he showed me and told me how to do it. So yeah. that right there is just like, man, I appreciate that. He didn't ask me for a dime. He didn't have to do that. And I'm, I'm guaranteeing that somewhere down the line, I'm going to pay it forward because I've been doing that since I got on YouTube. I didn't have my boy told me what you was doing. I said, I need his number. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I always yeah. have respect for you. I didn't know you was doing this. And I think the media, and this is what I'm here for. I've been saying we need to connect people together that's doing something other than shouting in the street. And so me giving you this platform, I'm I'm not looking at it like I'm oh man, I just help out Devin. This is not no, we I'm helping these kids because what you can what you're doing can help kids all over America. And yeah. why reinvent the wheel if you already have a model that's already set up? That's my thing. Everybody want to stand on top of somebody's shoulder and be the big guy. If you really have true intentions in paying it forward and helping these kids, then you wouldn't do that. I, I don't never do that. No. And I, so you've been quiet long enough. I think you need to, it, man, it's time for you. You got to take this thing on the road. Yeah, I am. I'm going, I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing, I'm, being, I'm better at documenting some of the stuff I'm doing. Um, but it's still, it's a, it's an afterthought. I'm like, oh man, I, I didn't get any pictures, or I did this, or I didn't, I didn't get any video clips or whatever, or I can upload or share, or whatever. it's it's still an afterthought. I'm just the work. These young kids, these young kids, they right there, they better at the camera than me. Yeah, and most know? of the time, the stuff I get is from yeah. somebody that was there. They took a picture. Hey, let, can you send me that picture? Can you send man, me? That? Let them young kids do what they do. <laughs> they, they, they 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 know how to do all that good stuff. Let them. They, they know that technology. That, yeah. That's your base to take pictures of everything and document everything you're doing. 
employ them kids. Oh and yeah. So man, listen, whatever I can do to help you, whatever I can do to make it bigger, um, I got some things going. I'll collab with you off the scenes. And like I say, I want to bring some people around you and we can kind of learn from you. We can kind of show you what we got. Um, we got some guys that got some uh, drone skills that can do all kind of stuff. So okay. um, like I said, shout out to the real foundation. Y'all can go look her up. She was on Ted talk. Uh, she was, a, she was a recovering. She's recovered. She's been clean, I think nine or 10 years. So she has a passion. Um, she don't like to call them sober houses. She's like to call them extended care um, because she really does have a passion for these young ladies and giving them home ownership. Cause like you said, that's the, I never knew um, that if you get a felony that some apartments you can't even rent that you sometimes you can have the money and you can't even buy a house. Mm -hmm. So cause people don't want you in the neighborhood. So yeah, that you check that box is, is yeah. It's almost forcing you in a situation to fail. So yeah. we got to combat that and we got to make, we, I mean, there's no way we can have kids out of whack and adults that's trying to get themselves back on track out of whack. How can you expect society to, to get back to some type of normalcy? So and man, I, look I, I respect way, what you're doing. I look at it this way. My last point of, of that, that felon box, whether you get a job or you get housing, I look at it this way. If I'm taking a chance regardless of who I rent to. So a person that has the felon box check that hadn't did anything, been clean, they got re uh, letters of recommendation from their employer, they haven't been on time, they show up, you know, they've been on time every day. Okay, is that a risk? Or someone that doesn't have that box check, they've just been getting away with stuff. That's right. So I'm, right. there is no formula of saying, hey, you, if you don't have that check box check, you're gonna be a, the best the best resident. So right. You just got to go with your gut and understand that I have to do enough of these, override enough of these to make an impact in my community of overriding these felons, giving people houses, giving them jobs and whatnot. So um, but but again, this blueprint, you can have it. Everybody have it. It's proven. It works. Um, the cities love it because it's cleaning areas up. It's putting these developments back on the tax records. Um, and I make them contribute as well. I make the cities partner with me. That's what I've been trying to say. Yes. Partner with me. I'm going to do a job for you. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to clean this area. I'm going yeah. to get some people jobs. I'm going to give housing. There's a long list of people don't know where they're going to put people in housing. Mm -hmm. people housing stuff. So with that being said, I need some help on this end. So, mm -hmm. but that, Man, that's tell, what we're on that. Tell oh, people one more time how to get in contact with you. Tell them your Instagram, your Facebook, just all your social media, your donate, how they can donate to you. Your cash yeah. app or your foundation, tell them everything, man, because what you're doing is beautiful. Yeah, go to buildingblocksmn.org and um, you can donate there through Building Blocks. Um, we're 501c3 since 2011. Had my audits every year since 2011. Everything's transparent. Um, my Instagram is embarrassing. I don't even know it, but I do have one. I got one. I had somebody set it up for me. Um, but I don't, I don't say that again. I, 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 so just look under Devin George. If you see me, with my kids, that's, that's me. I, but I do have the check mark, the, the little blue, the, the blue check marks and stuff. I don't like have that. no check mark. I don't and need validation. I, I, did, I did get verified or whatever. So I got the check marks on my stuff. So, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, I, I do have it, but I don't know. And so I'm gonna start checking that regularly and trying to reach out and trying to post stuff just, just to kind of get it out because I do have to do a better job of, of at least explaining or showing some of the stuff. No one's, you know, should be coming to Minneapolis to see what are you doing? Follow me around. I have to be let I have to let it be known and, and start getting some more stuff out. Now, is there any other men that are doing what you're doing that's helping people or or, or just any black owned business that you want to shout out right now while you have uh this platform? You can shout out anybody you want to shout out uh so people can direct people to their Instagram or whatever you know about these people. Man, I'm first really Sammy's Avenue Eatery. It's in Minneapolis. I'm gonna shout him out. He's gonna he's going he's gonna have another location, a second location in one of my buildings. And he's gonna have cater services. He's gonna be hiring, you know, kids from the community, adults from the community. So that he's he's a part of my model. But uh, along with all of these developments, I have I have a lot of black owned businesses, architects, and um, trades and construction workers that come along with this package. So when I'm doing these 20, $30 million deals, they love pushing my project because they know they're going to have some participation on those projects. Yes, so that's another difference too. When I do the developments, 
Mm-hmm. It's pretty much black owned and a lot of minority participation from the architects to the lawyers to the to the trades people. Everybody is involved in benefiting off that project. Um, and so so that, so that's that's one. But so so go support Sammy. Look him up. Um, he's actually he, he's doing something right now with Baron Davis. Um, on some network, I can't remember, but but he Keep said, "Go ahead, put it out there." Keep said, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but he texted me. He said, "Baron Davis said, what up?" You know, t- I said, "Tell BD what up." Um, but they're doing something, some kind of food network or whatever that they're doing and showing black-owned businesses and something like that. So go look up that what Baron Davis. Shout out to Baron Davis. Yeah, shout out BD. Um, I, I don't know what it is, but 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 I think stuff like that needs to be highlighted, supported, mm-hmm. um, and, and people need to be going out looking for. It, so okay, but yeah. Well, Man, like I said, man, uh, you making my skin crawl. You making me want to just <laughs> be there tonight uh, and, and be there ready in the morning. But uh, everything takes time and a plan. But uh, man, I, I'm 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 ecstatic. I'm excited that you uh, are willing to share. So many yep. people um, that have your blueprint. That once you get a light set, they just want to keep it to themselves. To no, me, sir. it's about paying it forward. You yeah. know, no, and no. Uh, I, man, I salute you. I respect you. And anytime you have somebody you want to shout out, if my platform continue to grow, you can always shout them out on here. And let's uh, let's keep collaborating, keep building. And anybody you connected to, connect them with me, and let let's build this thing for real. Yes, sir. Before I go, I got to do one last time. Brown dog. <laughs> <laughs>